hi welcome to another class of uh, physics now today what we are going to see about is um, you know certain precautions that you need to know about uh, in conducting an experiment now what do you mean by precaution it is nothing but you know before conducting an experiment you are making sure you know the instruments or the conditions or um, you know uh, the procedure everything that you have kept in your mind or you ha you know to conduct the experiment appropriately to get a reliable result okay now in igcse curriculum you have few experiments but each experiment has got different precautions but then there are uh, certain terminologies that you expected to write and uh, what i'm going to tell you or in this uh, lesson you will if you remember like a couple of points if you take it uh, you know in your head and remember it you will be able to write the precaution for every single experiment of course you need to know all the precautions you are expected to know but then from the examination point of view if you just know a couple of uh, points which are common for almost all uh, experiments you will be able to you know answer those uh, questions and uh, score those marks let's see a few of them now i've written here in uh, today's class we'll try to cover uh, these uh, terminologies what each of them stand for and where do we use it and when do we use it parallax error zero error set square where do we use it as a precaution and uh, spirit level how do we use it again when do we use it fiducial aid all right now first parallax error first i'll tell you what parallax error means some um, few of you may be familiar with but for those of you who do not know what it is about now it's an error that occurs due to the positioning of your eye level i'll uh, explain it with an example you will understand better so here i've drawn a measuring cylinder actually so you've got uh, you know it has got calibration at the sides right now what you need to know or you need to record is the level that the liquid fills inside the container right now if you look at it now this has nothing to do with parallax error just a general information now s most of the liquids will have a you know curvature like this right now this is curved downwards only mercury will be curved upwards now which reading do we take now if you look at from the side you know the edge will be actually up till here the liquid level will be up till here but you are expected to take the reading from the flat portion the reason being if you are taking it from here actually you are assuming that this area which is I'll just show that, you know this area is also filled with liquid that will kind of you know lead to error so actually this area is not filled with the liquid so to minimize the error what the correct way of recording it is you need to record you need to note down this level of the liquid okay what if it was mercury as, as i told you it would have curved this way right like if this is the machine cylinder it curves now here you will take the flat portion here you are only omitting this area it doesn't matter there's a very small uh, volume or small uh, space that will not cause any or major error in your experiment so remember this any liquid you are expected to take the flat level of the liquid surface all right now if you're trying to record this if say for example you're standing by the side and your eye level is somewhere here okay you're looking down from this angle you will not be or you may not be recording the actual reading of the surface there is a possibility of error you might be either taking up or down based on you know your eye positioning similarly if your eye level is here down you might be looking at a reading that is actually above the liquid surface okay so the error due to this positioning of your eye level is called parallax error it not only applies to liquid it applies to almost all instruments that you'll be handling uh, all instruments when i say analog instruments okay we'll come to uh, more examples later so now what you need to 
understand or know is parallax error is the error that occurs due to the positioning of eye level got it okay now how do i take the accurate reading you the correct position should be your eye level should be here in level with the reading that you are taking then you are uh, actually looking at the correct reading and you will be record you will be able to record the actual reading now how do if you are like from the examination point of view if you are asked to write in a center what are the precautions how would you write you just write precaution number 1 avoid parallax error avoid parallax error so that would be one statement that you need to remember so this is this is a general precaution which you can use it in almost all experiments because 99% of the experiments will have an instrument even if it is a meter rule meter rule how would a parallax error occur again if you are keeping it flat on the surface yeah your eye level should be vertically above it if you are at an angle recording say it's here probably this is the reading that you are taking you cannot be taking at an angle from the left or to the right you need to be actually positioning your eye level just above it okay imagine this is lying on the table similarly vertically if you are keeping your eye level should be in level with the reading that you are taking so even if you are using a meter rule you need to write or you need to be aware uh, that you have to avoid parallax error so in almost all experiments as i said if you write this one statement avoid parallax error there it's a rule of uh, thumb you get that point there now the next one what do you mean by zero error now zero error is very simple to understand it's easy now it is something that you know the starting reading is not exactly positioned at zero level i repeat the starting reading is not at zero okay i'll give you a simple example say for example if you are taking an ammeter now you know the scale reads say from 0 uh, this is 0 see this is to 5 amperes okay and you know there is a pointer now say this is an ammeter right <coughs> now if you if you have used it in an experiment you have connected it now see before connecting i have shown the pointer it is not exactly pointing at zero it's slightly moved to the right okay i repeat before connecting you notice that the pointer is not exactly at zero but it is somewhere beyond zero correct now if you have ignored this if you have connected it in a circuit and you have gone ahead and noted down some reading say for example you have got like 3. Point, 3.5 milliamps or amperes whatever is the reading will this be an accurate reading no why because you have not considered this error okay so before connect, would you be able to identify after connecting and after recording the reading no so before connecting any instrument you need to first check if the zero level and the pointer are in line with each other that is called if there is an error this error is termed as zero error get it so this here also how would you write it as a precaution check for zero error okay So, your precaution number two will be check for zero error. Now, these two usually, you know, in any experiment, you are expected to write minimum two precautions. Even if you are writing a planning, planning for an experiment, now it's uh, you know one of the question is planning for experiment. So, these two phrases, if you write. you are scoring there it's not just about scoring but then you are giving the examiner uh, you know um, making the examiner understand that you are familiar with all this and you know how to uh, record readings more accurately and appropriately i hope that's clear now certain times the set square or spirit level fiducia level these three come in handy this is uh, these three actually you cannot use it in almost all um, experiments as i said for these two all right 
Now set square. When do we use a set square as a precaution? Okay, it's not just for calculation or diagram, but then here we are using it as a precaution. Now an example would be now Hooke's law experiment when you're conducting, you all know you might be familiar what is Hooke's law. You're having a spring, you're testing a spring constant and so on, whether it's proportion. I'm not coming to the theory part, but while you're conducting, you're placing a meter rule vertically to the table, right? We'll be keeping a meter rule vertically to the table. Now, how do you make sure that the ruler is perfectly vertical? Because at times it might be slightly tilted, you know, at a slanted position here or there. You may not be um, paying attention to it. In that case, you're, you know, if you're checking the proportionality or drawing a graph, you're going to get an error in it. Okay. So, how do we make sure a ruler, or for that matter, any um, other like wooden block, whatever it is, you want to make sure that it is vertical to a surface? then you will use a set square okay so set square is used to make sure that a uh, any uh, like um, object is vertical to a flat surface now how do we use it if we are asked to uh, present diagrammatically then or if you are conducting the experiment actually then what you do is you place <coughs> first you have the ruler vertical of course you'll have it you know attached to a clamp and so on i have not drawn that now you will place the set square you know with the 90 degrees 90 degrees um, connecting the vertical part and the flat, flat surface okay now if you see there is a gap between the ruler and the set square that means it is not at 90 degrees to the table so you have to adjust the positioning of the ruler so that there is no gap between the ruler and the set square got it so a set square where, where do we use so use a set square to make sure the ruler is vertical to the surface all right so i hope you will you have understood that now spirit level so when do we use a spirit level it's also very similar to this now if you have something that is horizontal now uh, Say if you are testing uh, the elasticity of any beam, again I am not going into the theory part, you want to make sure that you know a beam or a beam is positioned horizontally see on a table. Now you have got uh, two supports here and you have placed it but you are not sure whether this is perfectly horizontal to the surface then you will use a spirit level now spirit level some of you may have noticed it you know um, in a toolbox you will have that as one of our carpenters usually you know have it uh, as a tool now i'll draw it separately i'm just enlarging it and drawing it you will see there is a liquid inside the spirit level and you will also have a bubble okay now if the bubble is positioned in the middle that means it is perfectly horizontal okay so when you place the spirit level onto the object the bubble should be exactly in the middle if it is moved say for example to the left the bubble is to the left okay that means your this side actually uh, this side is actually raised up and this is a bit lower so you'll have to adjust the heights so that the bubble comes back to the center so you place the spirit level onto the object which you want to make sure it is horizontal you use a spirit level <coughs> okay now what do you mean by fiducial aid now fiducial aid is something that again helps you in uh, minimizing the error when you're noting down certain readings okay i'll give you one example now in this hooks law experiment itself you have a spring right you want to measure the extension of the spring you've got you know loads attached and this keeps ex extending and you you have a meter rule from the meter rule you're recording the reading right now say uh, your uh, reference point is at you know at this position <coughs> now you need to know where exactly this pointer or this uh, position of the spring is corresponding to the ruler 
now if you notice there is this much of gap between the spring and the ruler now in such case it's you know it is again very difficult to record the accurate reading here you can use any other like you know object which is not related to or connected to these experimental instruments so that acts as a as an aid as the name says as an aid to minimize this error or to uh, record the readings easily and accurately now how do i have it now it could even be a pin in certain experiments you may have seen they just use a pin here so that when you know when it st stretches or extends the pin moves down and we have reduced the gap between the ruler and the spring so here the error is minimized you can record it easily okay so this pin could be referred to as a fiducial aid getting it so it is irrelevant of what type of what kind of material or how is it shaped you don't have to describe all that if fiducial aid is mentioned that means it is not part of or it is not one of the instruments or that um that actually you know uh, gives you the procedure but it helps you in recording the readings much more accurately now some you know students or some experiments they also use it like a tape paper you know masking tape you fold it into um, you know you fold it and make it into a tapered end so that the tapered end gives you the you know makes uh, helps you record it easily okay so that is fiducial aid i hope all these five points you will remember in most of the experiments you can use it as i said check for zero error and avoid parallax error are you know for sure uh, precautions in most of the experiments and these set square spirit level if you're you know specifically asked in certain experiments where it applies you can make use of them i hope the terminologies it their meanings and uh, where to use it when to use it are all clear for you see you in the next class